Welcome again. I am uh, Dina Dedi. I would like to welcome you to this um, uh, virtual taster session for our uh, flagship uh, aesthetic dentistry program at UCL Eastman, the uh, UCLG Certificate in Advanced Aesthetic Dentistry. I am a prosthodontist and a professional educator, and today I am delighted to have with me one of um, uh, our recent graduates from the program and current member of our teaching team, Dr. Catherine Wang. Catherine, thank you so much. And uh, also we have one uh, uh, teaching uh, team member, Dr. Maria Graniotti. Maria, I hope you are there. So, I'm here. Good morning, Thank everyone. <laughs> Good morning. So um, let me give you first a summary about the program. I'm going to try to illustrate the main points and then I will switch the screen over to Catherine. She will share initially her experience and then show you a little video from everyday life of uh, uh, scenes from the program. And then I will switch back to the blackboard and uh, then we will all have a discussion. So um, I will start with a question that I ask uh, everybody who comes to ask me for advice about their dental education in order to better direct them. Where would you see yourselves career wise, let's say in five years from now? If you had the magic wand, where would you like to be? What is your setting? How do you imagine your dream career? And when we have that as a mood board, then we will be able to pick the right program for us and uh, what would help us to reach that goal. So don't hesitate to dream big. This program involves a lot of visualization and we like to try to um, have precise goals and select what we want to do for our patients and how we want to do it with certainty and confidence. So. One of the mottos that I've always used in my educational career is it's all about people. It's about the patients, the people we work with, and our colleagues. And um, during the, the trip that is um, our career, we have to enjoy that and we have to make sure that we give them the, the best care that we can. So the group, our teaching team and, and usually the colleagues who decide to uh, train us, uh, think of them as a group of like-minded professionals with precise career goals and vision. And what we want to convey, evidence-based dentistry, we want to give to empower um, uh, the colleagues uh, via knowledge and to give them the confidence to meet demanding patients and also demands from the profession and, and the possibility to solidly handle, for example, a complaint, know our procedures, know our materials, know why we chose to do what we chose to do. And basically taking control and enjoy the cases because they are very, very fulfilling. I wouldn't be able to do that without um, uh, the group of people who work with me. And I would like to, I always call them my dream team. So um, you can see Maria, Catherine, Christina. Uh, they are part of the core team, as we say. Uh, when we join the program, usually we have sessions um, that are lectures and sessions, a lot of sessions of hands-on training and the hands-on training, we like to do that in small groups and every small group, usually of four or maximum five people, will have um, uh, a leader. And uh, we try to have a standard team so that there is continuity and calibration. We also have a lot of guest lecturers who come and implement uh, different topics of the, the program, for example, like uh, Dr. Horovich, who looks after the surgical periodontal topics, or Sean Wilkinson, who is a fantastic ceramist and also um, a digital wallows expert, who usually comes once or twice um, in the program and, and um, teaches us like um, uh, the systems we have selected for digital workflow. So this program has, um, has two ways of delivery, two modes of delivery. The program was created in 2008. This is when we had our first uh, um, uh, group. 
and uh, it has evolved uh, tremendously uh, ever since. So the initial format is um, part-time. So we have 24 contact teaching days and uh, the structure is uh, morning uh, lectures and afternoon hands-on. A lot of days we go uh, for the hands-on before lunch. So the hands-on takes, it's, it's a bit um, time-wise uh, more uh, during the program. Um, we, since uh, this year, I and mean, we created that uh, last year, but since this year, we have also the option of um, uh, having the hands-on done in blocks. We created that for our overseas colleagues uh, so that they don't have to travel and be with us, for example, every Thursday or every other Thursday. So for the overseas colleagues um, or the colleagues who would like to uh, attend this uh, via the computer, and then they will come and do the hands-on sessions in three blocks during the year, December, uh, March, and June. So traditional part-time mode is like every Thursday or every other Thursday, morning lectures, afternoon hands-on, and, and the block um, or mix mode, it will be uh, attending uh, the same uh, lectures online, and then the hands-on will happen on three blocks of uh, one week long, uh, morning and afternoon hands-on. And then people can choose uh, between those two modes of, of study. So uh, what are we going to learn? This is the important thing. And the way we design the program is we start from the basics, but at very high specifications. So we, we, uh, we have selected the topics following the trip of a very demanding aesthetic patient from A to Z. What do we do in the first appointment? What, how do we design the case? How do we test drive? what we have in mind to do. How do we pitch to the patient our treatment plan, which is uh, uh, several options and supported by evidence, um, and then how we execute the treatment. So these are the main um, uh, uh, topics that we cover. We start from uh, the records, case design, articulation and occlusion, which is very important for the um, uh, longevity of the case. Uh, dental photography, um, digital workflows if we don't want to work with traditional casts. Um, and then we have the segments of direct composites, adhesion, how to protect the pulp, how to do front teeth, posterior teeth, dull concept when we like to equalize the occlusal plane a bit, mock-ups which are very important, um, and, and then impressions, whitening preps, veneers. We spend a lot of time on veneers design and uh, very precise prep. I will share with you the seven steps of our preparations a bit later. Um, and then uh, cementation, ceramics, what materials, how to treat them, what cements, the two main protocols for uh, cementation of ceramics, uh, aesthetic bridges, bridges of void pontics, um, how do we restore the endotreated tooth? And also, we have um, two sessions on implant work because um, I believe that implant dentistry is part of routine dentistry nowadays, and we need to view uh, the implants as new roots, titanium roots. So we need to be able to offer options to our patients and understand the possibilities and be in control of the type of processes we want to do. So people here in this course learn how to plan, how to take impressions, and how to um, uh, make a nice implant temporary or a final crown, small cases. We have elements of larger cases um, and towards the end elements of full mouth rehabilitation. So uh, it's a lot of work. Now, when I will showcase like a few examples, um, during the year we have a few teaching patients, teaching cases uh, whose uh, treatment um, journeys we follow uh, uh, within the various topics of the course. And then here is like an example of the casts, how we would like to have them look at the quality of the surface and the lack of nodules, little secrets on how we can evaluate our laboratory work, how we communicate and how to be in control. Remember that the restorative dentist is the dentist who, um, uh, uh, if something goes wrong, the patient will come to us. 
even if the, the uh, mistake or the problem happened in earlier stages of treatment. So we need to be in control and assure high levels of uh, precision to all the steps, even our laboratory work. Um, we start when we uh, teach initially occlusion, we start with a basic geometry, um, the main uh, uh, registrations um, like Facebook um, and uh, when we need to do a, a byte registration, when we need to record in centric and when we need to use maximum interpretation is as simple as that. we try to simplify. We need to work with a semi-adjustable articulator. However, um, the course uh, for our exercises provides everything. You do not, you just need to show up uh, for the hands-on training. Um, we learn, we have everything on site. Um, so the idea is that uh, we design the type of prosthesis and the shapes in advance. We check it with mock-ups intraorally, and then we proceed with the work. If for the colleagues who like to embrace digital workflows, um, we uh, have we teach um, uh, elements from two um, uh, uh, types of workflow, and we also have an additional uh, day on CAD CAM ceramics where we scan with two different systems and then we peel our prosthesis and we cement them. So it's a lot of, of fun time. Here you can see um, the zircon Sunday where we take a facial scanning for um, our patient. And here an example of one of the teaching cases we will see a bit later. We also have two days of um, basic uh, perio procedures like front crown lengthening and also atraumatic extraction and site preservation and coverage of uh, root uh, session or enhancement of a pontic site with connective tissue graft. These are the, the three main procedures that I think every general dentist should be able to either perform or at least uh, prescribe. Um, we like to have high-end temporaries. Uh, we uh, uh, practice that in the hands-on and we select materials that we like, like this one here. And uh, also the dull concept which is quite useful uh, in a lot of situations of uh, palatal erosion and uh, wherever it can get us out of trouble when we engineer more space for our restorations. So after the initial planning days and the mock-up days and the designs, we proceed with uh, the preps. We teach um, uh, preps with seven steps, veneers, crowns, um, inlays, onlays, um, how we protect the pulp or what treatments we need to do in between, and then eventually how to uh, cement them. So um, I'm going to show you now two samples from the program. We will see one of our teaching cases very briefly, and then when I finish the presentation, uh, if you have questions, we can ask it later. And then I will show you also the step-by-step, -step, um, uh, the seven steps of the veneer, the classic veneer preparation. So. The motto that I want you, if you forget everything from this presentation, please keep this motto in mind. This uh, was borrowed from uh, a mentor of mine in the early stages of my uh, career during my training. So start with the end result in mind, because that gets us out of trouble. We are in control and then we can use our mock-up and our temporaries as uh, test driving uh, tools for the acceptance of the final restoration. So start with the end result in mind. Let's see Natalie. Natalie was not very happy with her smile. She had um, diastemas, she had wear, um, the display of the smile was not what she wanted, and she, she was also missing some teeth. A closer view, the um, uh, left central um, sits a bit more anteriorly in the arch and also had the previous root canal therapy and an old core that is discolored, as you can see. Please take a look at the texture on the natural uh, central next to her, how the light reflects there, and a closer view of the gamma outline. 
So when we teach our approach, we teach recording of all the elements that they affect aesthetics for that particular patient and how these compare to an ideal aesthetic starting point. So we like to work with checklists. It makes it easier. It makes it easier having a pathway, a recipe to follow. This is the maximum intercalation of Natalie the anterior radiographs, and we can see that we would need to go in and retreat this uh, root canal therapy, uh, replace our course before we do anything else. And we like to also divide the phases of the treatment control phase. Control phase, we need to look after um, the, the periocyte, any decay, uh, any infections before we proceed to the uh, temporary phase, design phase, and then to the final restorations. For example, it would be nice to go and have two nice veneers uh, while the teeth next door have decay, something like that. We need to approach the patient comprehensively. Um, you can see the side where Natalie is missing some teeth, and we have also a root treated over erupted tooth. This is the view. And this is a, a nice view that we like to have when we do DSD. So, we go back to the start with the end result in mind. We need to uh, mount the case, capture it, and then design ideal shapes. And for that case, the DSD3D system was used initially. And what we do after that, once we have a tentative shape that we feel that we would like, and here it helps to get information from the patient as far as to what shape she's attracted. Um, Squarish shapes, uh, soft angulations, round edges, sharp edges, uh, things like that, because then we can do the initial design uh, based um, on these preferences, check it occlusally, and then we need to finalize it once we transfer it in the mouth with the help of the mock-up. If you pay attention, we haven't touched the patient. Okay. So that's the initial mock-up, um, the, the initial shapes uh, um, uh, as they came from the 3D printed model from the design. And she felt that they were a little bit bulbous and eventually we corrected them and this is what she, she liked. So we copied that. Once we have a fine-tuned shape, we just imagine it or a scan and we copy. During the waiting, the interim stage, she had some um, augmentation and some new titanium roots placed, as you can see here. And she had the lower of her erupted tooth prepared and um, uh, in, in a ceramic crown placed to bring it back within the occlusal plane. She also had a mild crown lengthening because one of her chief complaints was that she felt her teeth were too short. And her final restorations involved one crown and then veneers uh, up to inclusive of the canines and the laterals and the other central. You can see the preparations. You can see how for the veneers we want to maintain the enamel. A closer view. But also take a look at the margins. We know where the margins are. Why is that? Because for the longevity of the restorations, we want to make sure that we have an undetectable junction between prepared and unprepared tooth structure. The temporaries are basically another chance to test drive the initially the agreed mock-up that we had. And that case was produced digitally. So basically, um, this is the copy of it, the scan of the temporaries. And shown here is fine tuning the shapes a bit based on the preferences. He will add some texture. He will make sure that there is cleansability. And then when he's ready, he will mill the veneers. Look how they, they come out from uh, when they are produced. And for this situation, uh, we used um, uh, one of the new generation zirconia. And he will stain them, and this is how they look. And that's her in her final smile. A closer view, the day of cementation, close to that. 
and the case. So it's a, it's a simple, straightforward case where we designed and basically executed with two checkpoints, the mockup and the temporaries. So this is the workflow, the recipe we follow for our cases. Plan the case and do a, a risk assessment, basically, as far as occlusion and as far as available in ML if we have veneers. Veneers, they don't do well unless they have the majority of the surface in ML. Design the new shapes and test drive them via mock-up. Impeccable preps and temporization. We are in control of the materials for the veneers. We have three main groups for uh, uh, material selection. And then finally, impeccable cementation. And this is the collection of the appointments. As you can see, the first two appointments, we don't grind. Actually, the first three appointments, we don't do preparations for veneers. The first two appointments, we diagnose and design. And the third appointment is very important and is the mock-up. The mock-up is very important for patient acceptance and also assurance that we are moving along the correct path. So let's see now the seven steps for our preparations for veneers, crowns, or inlays onlays. We have a step-by-step -step process, the seven steps of preparations, and we use specific um, uh, diamonds. We have a kit, we have our own kit, uh, how to do that easily. For the veneers, we bond the mock-up uh, the plastic basically uh, on the teeth, and then we start the sequence I'm going to show. So step one is incisal reduction, parallel 90 degrees to the long axis of the tooth, a millimeter and a half depth, like that, and flattening. Step one. Step two is an oval. So basically, we take a round burr and we create a buccal frame of the buccal surface preparation. This is not the margin. It's, it's a technique that assures that we remove the mental block we have, the fear we have not to touch the teeth next door, and we focus on mimicking the planes and the curves of the tooth. Step three, here we use horizontal depth cuts and we do not use the classic uh, diamond with the three wheels that um, a lot of us, uh, we trained in school. Um, I'm sure Maria remembers that, but we use individualized wheels in order to preserve the, the curves of the tooth. So um, don't be alarmed that this looks deep. Remember that when we do it on a human tooth, we, all, we have first the mock-up attached on it. So we make the horizontal depth reductions, the uh, guide uh, lines, and then we blend them. And when we blend them, we mimic the, the three curves of the buccal surface. Step five, we are approaching proximal reduction. So we have two options here. Classic veneer, we reduce 50% of the thickness of the proximals. When we close diastemas, then we go through and through on the other side and we finish at the mesiopalatal or the, the proximal palatal area. We use a smaller diamond and basically it's just a thickness reduction. Step six is the margination and the new margination involves the feature elbow in order to make the veneers invisible when somebody looks at our patient from the side. It's a, a soft chamfer. Remember, veneer preparation requires enamel preservation. So see how we move, creating the elbow. And then all our margins, we use also speed increase hand piece with medium coarseness, similar diamond, because we want our margins a bit smoother than the rest of the preparation. And finally, the fun step, stripping. We strip the proximals in two directions, up and down first, and then horizontal. That eliminates any little fragments of unsupported enamel. And also lightens up uh, the area to have um, more easy cementations. This is our kit, so we accomplish all our composites and all our preparations from that kit. It helps if we have um, less number of uh, small cutting tools because that makes the preparations quicker. 
and these are some of the diamond tapes for the stripping. And if I would choose one, uh, probably the most challenging day from the program, that would be the cementation, because the cementation is the, the step where we need to have absolute, absolutely good isolation and precision. So I'm going to show you a few little videos, for example, samples from uh, the, the, the routine of the course. This is how we uh, place the ceramic edge. And we use the BART protocol. So basically, this is an image veneer, and we edit it for 20 seconds max. We will then remove the edge. Clean it. And here we ask them to uh, use a different stick or not use the stick because look what happens, the stick when it gets wet, you know, little tips and skins for the daily practice. And then scrubbing, uh, removal of the byproduct with two edge this time. Just to remove the unwanted particles. This is not caustic, so, you know, we can hold it with our gloved hands when needed. And then wash it. And then we would dry and apply silent, and then we would go to the patient. So that was just a few uh, steps from how we learn. So uh, going back to the learning, OK, after the days, which um, we find them fun uh, because it's it, the day each day uh, goes very fast because we discuss and then we, we are very busy at the uh, hands on training. Uh, when we go home, we have a textbook and the textbook that we give to each participant is like the uh, it's a very beautiful book. It's the uh, Douglas Terry um, aesthetic um, uh, restorative dentistry. So usually the first day of the course, um, uh, we give the book as part of uh, the program. And also we have a password protected Moodle platform where everybody will have their own password and that connects to a compilation of articles, videos, um, copies of the lecture handout. So if you want to go back and see the lecture again or uh, access uh, a handout or, or access the, cl the classic and modern articles we give, you can do that from the comfort of your home. Now, this is a very prestigious course. So in order to give you the degree, we have uh, the following exams. Every June, we have an MCQ written exam. Basically, you log in and uh, every, we have 50 questions and then you click um, the correct one. Um, so we have another written exam uh, also every September. So that's very easy. It takes about um, one hour to do it. We have one essay on a topic that we want to research. It's a short essay, a maximum 2,500 words, that is due uh, every uh, uh, summer. And the most fun of all, and the reason why I think um, this course um, has a big impact on the careers of uh, a lot of graduates, is the case. So basically, uh, we ask you to treat a case obviously without feedback from us. If you want us to help you and give you feedback on cases during the course, we can do, but the case that you will submit for graduation is a case that you would have treated without feedback from the um, uh, instructors. So it's, um, it's a, uh, a case that people use after uh, when they go to interview for jobs. Um, they put a lot of creativity in there and I will show you some samples. And uh, basically to graduate, you come in and you show us a small presentation of the case. Obviously you don't bring the patient, but it's, it's a PowerPoint or a keynote presentation. And um, this is, you know, um, the, these are the uh, exams, if you want to call it, for graduation. So I will show you some examples of cases from previous graduates. So this is from uh, James, James Lee, who is now uh, a prosthodontist in the US. Um, so before and after, that was a case with a combination of anterior crowns and veneers, uh, layered DMAX. 
Uh, from the first year of the course, um, uh, Dr. Zibutz, Anthony Zibutz, a very beautiful case, uh, one crown replacement, crown lengthening, and three veneers, layered DMAX as well. And you can see how beautifully he did his preparations. Uh, these are the depth cuts uh, after he fused his mock up on the teeth and beautifully executed preparations. This is another case that involved um, a removal of, of all, all prosthesis and then uh, reworking um, uh, the uh, um, volume of the anterior teeth uh, from, uh, again, uh, I think it was the third year of the course. And that's a beautiful case. It's a full large case from um, uh, Patrick, um, Patrick Holmes. Again, I think the first year of the course and a metal ceramic uh, full uh, upper uh, case. So the, the the case can be something very simple, like two anterior composites, or something quite complex, like what Patrick did. You guys choose. We do not uh, basically penalize for the magnitude of the case. It's just the thought process and, and the execution. So people have brought like um, two composite reconstructions um, in other examples. Also, the nice thing that we have implemented the last few years is the course award. Uh, you can see here the award from last year, Catherine, uh, who had uh, uh, the uh, most highly um, uh, graded case uh, from her class. Uh, she, um, uh, her award was a trip to Paris to attend the International Digital Days uh, Symposium um, uh, the, in, in January. So uh, after the graduation, so we don't know because of the lockdown, we have to be a bit more creative for this year's award. So it cannot be a trip, I'm afraid, but um, we will figure out something. Usually we like to give like a nice meeting um, to our uh, graduates. So uh, that was a, a very quick summary of the course. Uh, before we go to our discussion, I would like then to um, a switch to um, Catherine's screen. Um, at the end, um, if you have any other questions, please copy my email. You can email me directly uh, or follow my uh, course Instagram page where I, I uh, upload uh, various initiatives that we, we have during this lockdown. We have some very nice guest uh, uh, lecturers. So give me one moment to uh, uh, share my screen with Catherine. So Catherine, I'm stopping sharing. Yes, okay. I am out now. Okay. Okay. You can hear me? I can hear you. So I will let you go ahead. Apologies. Uh, so I okay. will. Okay. Yeah. Sure. So just a couple of moments because now it, it's when we load the new screen, it takes, uh, unfortunately, just a little bit of time. Okay. All right. Thank you, Dina, for the introduction. And hello, everyone. Can you see me? I can see you. Oh, you can see me. Okay. Um, so my name's Catherine, and I am in Australia at the moment. Um, that's probably why you can see it's dark outside. Um, so just a bit about myself. Um, I graduated in 2013 from the University of Melbourne and moved to London in 2017. Um, I was practicing a private practice in Sydney for three and a half years. Um, so since I graduated from uni, I had a special interest in aesthetic dentistry. Well, I did quite a few CPD courses from time to time, but I felt like every time I went to courses, I learned a few techniques and some protocols, but not systematically. So often I found that I didn't have the confidence in treating um, bigger cases. So that's when I started to look for a continuous, more formal course. So I searched online and found out, found out about this course. Well, before I applied for it, um, I attended Dr. Dina's uh, another course, it's only an inlay, um, because I was not too sure about how it is like. You know, it is a lot of commitment. So, well, um, it turned out that I really enjoyed it. And I quite like um, Dina's teaching style. It is very clear, right to the point. 
and she is very encouraging and enthusiastic about teaching as well. So I asked her about the program on the day and she kindly explained the course topics and timetable to me that day. And I decided that, yeah, that this is what I want. So I applied and luckily got accepted. Um, well, throughout the year, um, we had 24 teaching days. Um, and normally in the morning, as Dina explained, we will have lectures with either her or uh, visiting specialists like um, perio, author, um, technician, ceramists, etc. And from the middle of the day or afternoon, it, uh, it was dedicated for a hands-on session. Um, we normally have two to three teachers for about 10, 12 students. Um, so today, Dr. Maria joined us as well. She is in the teaching team and she had her specialty training from Columbia University. I have to say that she is very knowledgeable. Um, do ask her uh, for help if you um, are joining us and um, we had Dr. Christina as a regular teaching member as well she was very strict but that was um, in a good way um, there was a lot I mean um, a lot of hands-on practicing which I was looking for um, but apart from that we had smile analysis from day one and DSD component you know you can start to think about cases um, not just like prepping teeth, cementing veneers, you know. Um, you get too exposed to complex cases where you will be guided through the thinking process. So, um, you know, on top of that, I got to know another like nine dentists who had similar vision as I did. We all wanted to learn from the great to achieve functionally well and aesthetically pleasing result and help the patients with our best. So I would say it was um, really pleasant and fulfilling experience and I never regret that I made the choice. I really appreciate um, Dr. Dina and her team taught me well and gave me the support throughout the year and even after the program as well. Um, so I have created a small video summarizing the main points of the course uh, and some highlights of the daily life in UCL. So I'll play it for you. Um, hope you enjoy. Thank you. 